Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video we'll be learning how to use the find command from within a Linux or Mac terminal. Now the find command is a powerful tool that allows us to quickly and easily scan through our file system to find files and directories that meet a certain criteria. And we can even perform actions on those results that we get back. Now the reason I wanted to walk through how to use this tool is because sometimes I see people who write scripts that are more complex than they need to be, whether that's in Python or another language, when really what they are trying to do can sometimes be done a lot more easily using these command line tools. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. So just like any of these commands, if you look at the manual page by typing in man and then the name of the command, in this case it's find, now this will show us all of the options and different ways that we can use this command but we're gonna go over a lot of these here in this video. So right now I'm currently in a test directory where I've created some sample files and directories. Now if I wanted to find all the files and directories starting in this current directory, then I can just say find and then a dot, and that dot signifies the current directory. Now if I run this, then you can see that we get all of the files and directories below the current directory that we searched. And you can see that it even searched down through some of the subdirectories here. Now, if I wanted to find all of the files and directories within a specific directory, then I can just replace that dot with a directory name. So if I wanted to find all the files and folders within my website demo directory, then I could just say find website demo. And if I run that, then you can see that it returned all of the directories and files within that website demo directory. Okay, so now let's start filtering out some of the results. So let's say that I wanted to find only the directories and exclude the files. Now to do that, I'm going to do this in my current directory. So I'm going to say find within my current directory. And I'm just going to say type D. And this will find all the directories and no files. So there you can see that I got a result of all of my directories below my current directory. Now if I wanted to find all of the files and no directories, then I can just replace that D with an F. Now if I run this, then you'll see that it returns all of the files and no directories. Okay, so now let's say that I wanted to find a file with a specific name. Now I know that there's a file below my current directory somewhere called test underscore one dot txt, but I can't remember exactly where that is. So let's go ahead and search within the current directory for this file, and it'll search in all the subdirectories as well. So we want to do a find within the current directory, which is that dot, a type with an F, which is gonna find all the files. And then I'm gonna do an option of name. And that name was test underscore one dot txt. So you can see when I search for that exact file name that it returned this one result within this test dir directory. Okay, but sometimes you don't know the entire file name exactly. What if I knew the file started with the word test, but I couldn't remember the rest of it? So if I wanted to find all the files that started with the word test, then you can use an asterisk as a wildcard. So instead of searching for the specific file name here, I'm just gonna say test and then that asterisk there to do a wildcard. Now, if I run that, then you can see that it returns all of these files that start with the word test. Now, there are some files that start with the word test that it didn't return. And that's because some of them have capital letters and this name, option here is case sensitive. Now if I wanted to be case insensitive, then instead of typing name, I can use I name. So I'll do an I name search instead. And if I run that, now you can see that it gets files that start with test and it's case insensitive. So it returns the ones that have capital letters in them also. Now that wildcard that I showed you, uh, sometimes that is useful. Uh, in order to find files with certain extensions. So let's say that I wanted to find all Python files below my current directory, then I could just say star.py. So you can see when I ran that, that it did return some Python files within some of these subdirectories here. And this star just means anything, and then this .py, it's saying return anything that ends in this .py. Now we can also filter files and directories based on their metadata, and that can be extremely useful. Uh, so let's say that we wanted to find all the files modified in the last 10 minutes. So I can do the find type file, and now I want to find all the ones modified in the last 10 minutes. So I'll say m min minus 10. So when we use this minus sign right here, it's saying to find files that were modified less than 
10 minutes ago. And we could use the plus sign to find files that were modified more than 10 minutes ago. And you can see that this didn't return any results because none of these files have been modified in the last 10 minutes. But if I create a new file here, so I'm just going to say new one.txt, and then I rerun this command to find files that were modified in the last 10 minutes, then you can see that it found that new file that we just created. Now, all of the other files were modified more than 10 minutes ago, uh, but just to show you what that looks like, I can do find files that were modified more than 10 minutes ago. So if I run that, you can see that it returns a lot more here because all those were modified more than 10 minutes ago. Now you can actually combine multiple of those time searches together. So let's say that I wanted to find a file that was modified uh, more than one minute ago, but less than five minutes ago. So I can just put in this same option here, and this says more than one minute ago and less than five minutes ago. So if I run that, then you can see that it returned that new file that we just created because it was more than a minute since we created that file. Now, sometimes working with minutes isn't exactly convenient because if you have something where it's been days that you want to search, then you don't want to calculate up all the minutes for that. Now, if you wanted to see files that were last modified a certain number of days ago, then instead of that M minute option, we can use this M time option. So I'll do M time and I'll say less than 20 days ago. And just like with the minute searches, if we wanted to, then we could make this more than 20 days ago also, but you can see that that returns no results because none of these were modified more than 20 days ago. Now I've been using M min and M time for modified minutes and modified days, but you can also use A min and A time for access minutes and access days. And you can also use C min and C time uh, for changed minutes and change days. Okay, so another useful option is to be able to search by file size. So let's say that we had some files eating up our disk space and we didn't know exactly where those were. Well, we could run a search and try to find all the files over a certain size. So let's say that I wanted to find all the files that are over five megabytes. So in order to do that, I'm gonna find everything on my, under my current directory, and then that's gonna be the size option, and we wanna find over five megabytes, and that's how we would find those. So if I run that, you can see that that returns one result. Now you can see that this is similar to the same syntax that we used to search by time, except now we have this uppercase M here to signify megabytes. Now we could also use a lowercase k for kilobytes, and we could use an uppercase g for gigabytes. And just to prove that that file is over five megabytes, then I can actually go ahead and search all of the files in this directory. And if I run that, you can see that our search returned this wallpaper.jpg. And if we look at the size of that, that's actually seven megabytes. And we have two more pictures in here that are under that five megabytes. So those didn't get returned by that find command. Okay, so another common search that I like to perform is finding any files that I have created that are currently empty. Now this can come in handy if you've created a bunch of test files that are just lingering around that don't actually have any data. So to do this, we can just find all of the files and we can just tack on this empty option here. And if I run that, then you can see that a lot of these files are empty because I just created these to do this walkthrough. Okay, so one of the last filters that we're gonna look at is how to search based on permissions. And I do this a lot, especially when working with websites and checking to make sure that certain permissions are what they should be. And we could do that using the dash P-E-R-M option. So I'm gonna do a find within the current directory, dash P-E-R-M for permissions. Now I'm going to do a search on all files and directories that have permissions of 777. And you can see that within this website demo directory that a lot of our directories and files have that permission of 777. Okay, so now that we've looked at several different ways that we can filter our results, let's look at how we can actually perform some actions on our results. So this is where this becomes extremely useful. So let's say that we found a lot of permissions here within our website demo directory that were incorrect and that we wanted to change these. 
So currently, everything is set to 777, which gives anyone read, write, or execute permissions. So first, we want to change the user and group for every directory and file in our folder. And then we want to set all of the directories to have a permission level of 775 and all the files to have a permission level of 664. Now that might sound like a lot of work, and if you did this manually, then it could take an extremely long time. Now this is sometimes where I see people who write overly complicated scripts to do something like this, but we don't have to write something like a Python script for this if we know how to use these terminal commands properly. So we're going to do this everything that we want in three easy steps. So first of all, we wanted to change the user and group for every file and directory within our website demo folder. So remember, find will return every file and directory by default. So if we run find on the website demo directory, then this will return every file and directory within that folder. So now, if I want to set the user and group on all those results, then we could use this exec option here to execute a command on those results. Now the command that I want to execute is this chown, and that will change the owner of each result. So for the user here, I'm just going to type in Corey Schaefer as the user, and for the group, I'm going to make this www-data. So now, if we were to run this command on a normal file or directory, then this is normally the place where we would put in the name of that file or directory. But since we are getting these results through the find command, then we need to put a placeholder here instead. And the placeholder for these commands are just these curly braces. And now all we have to do is end our command. So we can either put in a plus sign or we can put in a backslash semicolon. Now I like to use the plus sign, but that's just personal preference. Uh, whatever you want to use is completely up to you. So now if I run this, then you can see that it looks like not much happened, but we also didn't get any errors. So now if I do an ls-la on our website demo directory, then you can see that our user and group were changed for all these files and folders. Now these two dots here are just the uh, parent directory, so that's why they still have the old group, so that's fine. So now let's say that we wanted to set all of the directory permissions to 775 and all the file permissions to 664. And this time I'm not going to go as in-depth, just so you can see how quickly we can run these types of commands. So first of all, we want to... So first I'm going to go ahead and delete the command that we just ran. Now we want to find all of the directories. So I'm going to say type D and now I want to run a command on all these directories. And that command I want to be change mod which we can use to change permissions and I want that to set all of those directories to 775. I'm going to put in my placeholder for all the results and then a plus sign to end that command. So now if I wanted to see if that worked then I can do a find within that website demo directory and I can search for permissions of 775. And if I run that, then you can see that it returned all of our directories. So our directories within website demo uh, did get those new permissions of 775. Okay, so now let's change the file permissions to 664. I'm just going to pull up this old command here, and instead of the directories, I'm just going to go ahead and find the files. And instead of 775, I'm going to change these to 664, and we can run that. Okay, so just like we did with our directories, now let's search for the permissions of 664 and make sure that all of those were set correctly. And you can see that when I run that, that it returned all of our files underneath that website demo directory. So they all have those new permission levels of 664. Okay, so now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So let's say that I wanted to delete all the image files in my current directory that ended with a .jpg extension. Now first, Let's go ahead and just build up the command. So I'm going to do a find within my current directory, and I want to find a type of f, which is a file, and I want the name to be star.jpg. Now see, this is important here because if you're doing something like deleting or modifying files, then you should always run the find command to see what your results are before doing anything to those results, because you might not be removing the files or folders that you expect. So running the find command first is like a dry run that allows you to see the results that you'll be working with. 
So you can see when I ran that command that our results aren't what we wanted because I only wanted to remove all the files in the current directory. I don't want to delete anything in the subdirectories. And you can see here that our find command returned all of the JPEGs from our website folder as well. Now this is a mistake that people make sometimes, so it's important to be careful. So instead, to find only the files in our current directory, then we can set this max depth option. So I can set a max depth here, and I'm just gonna set this to one. Now setting a max depth of one means that you're only gonna search down one directory, which is the current directory. So you can see when I ran that, that it got our correct results and that it excluded the matching files within our subdirectories. So now if we wanted to delete these files, then we know that find is returning what we expect. So we can just bring back up that command. And now we can just add on to the command uh, what we wanna run. So we wanna execute an RM and then put in our placeholder for those results. And then just end that with a plus sign. And if I run that, and now if I do an LS within this current directory, then it deleted all of those JPEG images within the current directory. So you can see how these find commands can be extremely detailed as to the results that you're getting back and allow you to execute certain commands on those results. Uh, so this can be extremely useful in your project. So uh, for example, sometimes I'll see Python programmers who maybe want to clean up any of their PYC files that they have lingering around. And I sometimes see questions where people ask how to delete those. And it would be as easy as running a command like this, except instead of a star.jpg, you could do uh, star.pyc and you could set that max depth uh, to any level that you wanted or you could take it out all together and that would delete all of the PYC files in your entire project. Okay, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, like I said, there's a ton of different things that you can do with this find command if you just take the time to play around with it. Now, if you get good with commands like this, then it's gonna save you a lot of time. Uh, so like I said, instead of writing complicated scripts to do these exact same things, you can just run a quick terminal command to do exactly what you want. Now, if you do have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And also if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.